Hey there, I'm Meg, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a welcome sequence or a workflow on Flowdesk. So let's get started. So you're going to head on over to Flowdesk and you're going to log in. Wait patiently. <laughs> So the first place that Flowdesk brings you when you log in is the emails section. Now, if you have not watched my tutorial on how to create an email on Flowdesk, I highly recommend going there first. It's linked down below because as we are creating this workflow, I'm not going to cover how to design the email since that is in my other tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to cover how to put an email sequence in order on the workflows section. So we are going to head up to the top and we are going to click workflows. Now, if you're a little bit fuzzy on what a workflow is, basically you set a trigger. So if somebody subscribes to your email newsletter list, then they are sent a series of emails welcoming them to your list and getting them familiar with your business. So to provide you with an example, we're gonna go through my welcome sequence which is here. So you can see I have a few. I used to deliver my online courses on Flowdesk and now I have login on my website, so I don't use these anymore. So this is my workflow, just like with emails, they look the same, you click edit. And because this is an active workflow, we're going to pause it in order to view and edit it. So you can see the structure of my workflow and I'll break it down for you. So in the beginning, you set a trigger. So in this case, a subscriber is added to my business and marketing email newsletter list. Then they are immediately sent this email. And then a day later, they're sent this email. Then two days later, they're sent this email. Three days later, they're sent this email. And then another three days later, they're sent this final email. So the time delay is really up to you. I've seen a lot of people do one or two days, which I think is too short because then you're just bombing people with emails on top of your regularly scheduled emails. So I send a weekly newsletter. So people will be receiving my weekly newsletter on top of getting these emails if they're in this funnel. So I like to delay it a little bit more as we get towards the end. So just to show you what a welcome sequence includes, like what its purpose is, we're going to go through my emails. So if you want to edit an email, you click on it and then you click on it again. So this is the very first email that goes out and it really connects with my audience. I talk about their pain point and then I share free resources. And then I just barely mention my online courses, but I don't go automatically in for the sale just yet because I want them to get to know me and to start trusting me and to get a feel for my resources so that way they understand how I do things. So then after I send that email, I have an email that's more about me and why I'm Miss Megabug, which is my nickname. It's me and my Volkswagen bugs. So this email is all about me. And then this email has all of my freebies in one place, so they can just go through and download every single one of my freebies. I like to make it easy. I don't like people to have to enter their email address in order to get all of my freebies. That's just a lot of waste of time, so I put them all in one place. And then this is where I finally introduce my online courses in detail, and I have, I'll show you this email. I also split out, because I have quite a few courses, I split out where you are in your business journey and that helps you determine which courses are best for you. And then there's a little blip about each course and everything's linked, of course. So that is the fourth email that goes out. So by that point, people already know a little bit more about me. And so they're more likely to purchase an online course since they know how I create courses. If they've watched my YouTube tutorials, they're a very similar structure. They can get a sense for my personality and determine if they want to work with me to begin with. And then also they get a sense of what I know. And then my final email is a list of resources like Squarespace for website design and Flowdesk for email marketing. So this is where I share all the tools that I use in business. 
So before we dive into creating your own workflow, since we're still on mine, I want to kind of show you how it looks since it's easier to see things from the end than from the beginning. So just like we did earlier, we're going to click on the email and this is where you edit the email. But this is also where you add the subject line and the preview text. This is different than if you were creating a regular email newsletter. This stuff you don't get to until towards the end, but on a workflow, it's right here at the beginning. So we are going to publish this workflow so that way it's live. And now we are going to create one from scratch. So very easy, what you do is you click new workflow and same as when creating an email, you can just choose a template. So if you are, let's say that your sequence is you're specifically delivering a freebie or you want to get somebody to buy something or you just want to introduce them to your business, that's what these two um, satisfy. But I like to start from scratch. And then you can just call it welcome sequence and then the name of your list. So it's a little more overwhelming here because there's nothing. It's both underwhelming and overwhelming at the same time. So here's what you want to do. The very first thing you want to do is set your trigger. This is what makes your welcome sequence start sending. So for most people, the trigger is when a subscriber is added to your list. That is currently the only option. So we are going to just do my test list. So that's your trigger. And then you click, this is how you add your emails and your time sequence. You click this plus here. So the most common thing to do is to have an email send automatically. So what's snazzy here is that you can duplicate an existing email. And when we click that, it chooses your email. So not from another email workflow. This is, none of these emails are in my welcome sequence. These are my actual email newsletters, which is awesome. It saves you so much time if you've already put together a beautiful email. So I recommend choosing one of these, even if it's not the exact layout you want, because you already have your branding established on one of these. So just for, the sake of what we're doing, I'm just going to randomly choose one. All right, so now as soon as somebody is added to the test list, they're automatically sent this email because there's no time delay. If you want to add a time delay, you can. You just click that plus. And then over here, again, this is where you change your subject line and your preview text. Always have preview text and a subject line. So now we are going to add the next step, which can be an email, but you're probably going to want to have a time delay so people don't get two emails at once. So for your time delay options, you can choose a certain period of time, which is the most common. You can choose a certain day of the week. So let's say that you always send out a weekly e-newsletter on Tuesdays and you don't want people to get the same, like get two emails on the same day. You can choose to have this only send out on Wednesday. You can also choose a certain time of day, a specific day of the year. So let's say that you have the same type of holiday promotions. You can automatically set those up ahead of time, which is snazzy. But again, the most common is a certain period of time. And your options are minutes, hours, and days. So we're just going to leave it at one day. We're going to be a little lazy. And you're going to click on the plus and you're going to add another email. So we're going to duplicate an existing email again just for time's sake. All right, so now you're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to have our next step be triggered by a condition. So we're going to choose our condition. So take action if. So these are our different options. So the one that the two that are the most common is if a subscriber opened your email. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I never do conditions, so I keep forgetting you have to add a delay. You have to add a time delay first. All right. So after one day, once this condition is met, let's say that the subscriber did open this email. So yes, let's say that they're sent another email. 
we'll just choose that one. And if they did not open this email, let's say that we send them a different email. And what's cool about this is, so one, you don't want to resend them this email because if they ignored it the first time. But what is good to do is if they did not open that email, you can basically take this email and just restructure it a little bit. So change the subject line so that way they don't ignore it again, thinking it's the same thing. So it can have the same content as that first email here, but just do it a little bit differently. And then if they did open that email, you can just send them to the next one. And then from here, you'll notice that now we have two different paths that they can take. This is where it can get very detailed and a little bit more complicated. So let's say we want to add an action. I don't have any actions. So I don't have any action set up because my welcome sequence is a little bit more sim simple. So let's say that this person not only didn't open this email here, let's say they decided not to open this email, you can remove them from your test segment. But right now, how we have it set up, and this is where things get a little bit complicated, we need to have another trigger here. So we're going to have a condition trigger. So we're going to set the trigger to subscriber, subscriber opened workflow. And then we also have to add the delay. So see, it can get a little bit, a little overwhelming. Alrighty. So from the top, if your subscriber did not open this email, so they did not open it, they're sent this email a day, a day later. So after a day, if they didn't open this email, they're sent this email. And then another day later, if they did not open this email, they're then removed from the list, or you can add a different action, which would be to add them to another list, or you can just send them an email. So workflows can get pretty complicated. I recommend setting yours up like I have mine set up. It's just a very simple way to get started. And then as you evolve deeper into your business and you realize that there's a little bit more personalization that you can add to your welcome sequence, then go forth and give this whole thing a try. So again, we're just gonna go through the means like we did before, let's say you're ready to go. You're gonna click publish and then if anything is incorrect, it'll tell you, which I'm not sure what the problem is. It says validation error of condition step. Whoops. Oh, this drives me crazy. If you accidentally move your mouse, then it brings you back to the beginning. So we're going to go back to the very beginning. And the nice thing is Flowdesk does automatically save what you've worked on. So this is what we just did. So I don't want to waste your time and figure out what that error was, especially since I am not going to actually use this workflow. So if you're a little fuzzy on how to publish a workflow, it's really simple. You just click publish and then you confirm and then it is live and good to go. So that is how you create a welcome sequence workflow on Flowdesk. I hope it helps. If you're looking for even more information on how to design the emails in that welcome sequence, check out my how to create an email on Flowdesk tutorial linked down below. So this tutorial is part of a series on getting started with Flowdesk. I've also linked to that tutorial down below. If you're looking to learn even more about e-newsletter marketing, including how to get people on your list, what to send to them, and how to make sales from email, check out my Expand with Email online course. It covers all of this and more, taking the overwhelm out of email marketing. I will see you in the next video.